Hello, this is LJ Botho, and this video will be a few text formatting techniques in Microsoft Excel. And even though this will be in Microsoft Excel for Windows, the information is generic enough to be useful on Macs and other operating systems. Also, a quick note I may not have mentioned before. Um, I really enjoy doing these videos. And as I start working, I might start speaking a little faster than I should. These videos are going to be in YouTube, so you have every right to use the YouTube settings to either slow down the delivery or to speed it up if you want to see the activity and not necessarily listen to what I'm saying because visually you're just picking up enough. So I just wanted to let you know you have those options. So what we're going to do is going to be in Excel, and I already have a file open. What this file is is just something very simple. It's a single sheet in a workbook. The sheet does not have a name. The title area, if you will, of this is telling us this is a basic worksheet formatting example. And then we have several columns of information and several rows of records. And I have a little list of stuff here to remind me of what I want to show you. So this is meant to correspond with the Microsoft Excel Boot Camp chapter that's discussing this. So I hope it'll be helpful. So one thing we're going to do in here is we're going to start with text size. What we have is this sort of header or sort of a title, and then we have this header row, and I want them both to stand out. And actually the text is a little small, but the neat thing is, is we can always increase the uh, size of the document we're working on, and the text size will only matter if you were to print this out. But even so, we can go ahead and click cell A1 and hold our left mouse button down, unless you set your mouse to have the buttons um, switched from right to left. But hold the left button down and then drag to the end of the numbers. Then I'm going to come up here into our Home tab, which is where we're going to do most of this work, in the font group, and I'm going to change from 12 to 14, which will make the text a little bigger. Next, I'm going to take basic work, workbook formatting here. Now, interestingly, it looks like it's taking three cells here, but it actually isn't. It's in one cell, and it's flowing as far as it needs to, seemingly, across other cells. And as long as there's no other data in them, that's good. But if I were to say hello in here, then suddenly this would be cut off, and we have another cell with a word in here, which I want to delete. So basic workbook formatting. What I want to do, however, is I want to make it bigger. So I don't need to come here and make all of these cells bigger, just the cell that has the text in it. Come up here and we'll make it size 22. Next, I'm going to use the font group to make it bold. Then it stands out a little bit. You can also do other things to it, like make it italicized and make it underlined, or to turn those off and just stick with bold. Next, in our sort of tabular data here, this is what is called a data set, set of data. It's also a data range when you select a certain amount of it. I've selected the range from cell A3 down to cell F21. But you can actually make data ranges without selecting the whole data set. Maybe I just want the data range of the first and last names. So cell A3 through cell B21 would be that particular data range within this data set. We'll see more of that later on. But the important thing is that these are names and addresses and salaries and so on. But this is a word above each of those columns of information that describes what's going to be in the column. The first name, Steve, Samuel, Jara. Last name, Apone, Rogers, Burke, address, and then the street address. So we want this to stand out more. So we're going to go ahead and bold it again. And then another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to underline it. But instead of underlining it like this, what I instead want to do is underline it the cells. This is under, underlining some text within the cells, but the underline doesn't extend to the whole cell. So I don't want this. What I want to do is turn off this, and I want to come also to the Home tab font group and go into this little icon that reads borders. This reads bottom border at the moment because the bottom border is selected. Now I'm going to just, if I wanted to say a left border, I could do that and I'd have only one left border. Don't want that. 
So instead, what I really do want is a bottom border like this. Now, at a later time, oops, and I want to get rid of the left border over here. So let's get rid of that. Turn it off. Hmm. No left border. Oh, actually, may have to go no border and then go ahead and bottom border again. There we go. That's how that got cleaned up. But in addition, we've got it bold and we have an underline. But let's go ahead and see if we can change the cell color. So if you click on a cell, in the font group, there's this little paint bucket. And this paint bucket lets you choose from a palette of colors that are part of the theme of this particular document. So this particular workbook is using a theme. We'll talk about themes and color palettes and font palettes in a later video. But the basic one here has these colors to choose from. So say I wanted it to be a similar color to this green over here, I could hover over and choose something. Now, the thing to keep in mind is you want to have good contrast. If I were to choose the darkest one, I wouldn't be able to see the word, so I'd have to go up and change the font color to white. And that might be exactly what we want. Now, I'm going to do something here that's a really helpful tool. One, uh, well, two helpful tools. One, when you make any significant changes in your work, you should always be saving your work as you go. So you don't need to wait until you finish like all of these steps to save your work. This is an existing file and it's in an existing location. So all you need to do is go file, save, and it will save your work. Or you can use the handy uh, keyboard shortcut, which is a control and C. Well, excuse me, control and S as in Sam, control S for save. That's what we want. We didn't want to copy anything. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is, and since I just tried to copy something, what I wanted to show you wasn't going to work. So what I'm going to do is I am going to come over here and do the same thing. I don't want that dark. So another wonderful keyboard shortcut is control Z. And that undoes the last thing you did. Let's try, oh, and we could do it again. And as I understand, we can do Control Z up to 100 times, although if you really have to go back that far, whoops. And there's a point if you save your file and then you close it and then you open it again, you can't undo things that happened before you saved the file and closed it. But in this case, I didn't like that particular look. So what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to just choose a pale yellow. How about this one? That looks good. And um, it's bold and it's got an underline. Well, another thing you can do is you can select more than one cell at a time and apply it as well. And a third thing you could do is use this lovely thing that looks like a paintbrush. The paint bucket will dump colors in. The paintbrush is what they call a format painter. It's one of my favorite tools. You basically use it by clicking on a cell that has the style that you want, the, the font size, the color, the whatever, that you want other cells to use. So you click once in that cell, you click on this paintbrush, which is a format painter, click it. You notice how it's a little grayer now because it's selected. And then when you hover over another cell, you can see that kind of plus sign of what your cursor is doing and the paintbrush to indicate the paintbrush is loaded with the style. So you would press your left cursor button down and drag over the cells, and then you would let go. And there you go. You've just painted a style over. Now this is starting to look a little disturbing because I don't know about you, but these number signs are driving me up the wall. What do they mean? Basically, all they mean is that there's content, usually a number, that can't be wrapped, and it's basically got too little space to be displayed. So what we need to do is make this column wider. Now there's more than one way to do that, but what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the column and then we're going to scroll down this menu and look for column width to see how wide the column is. It says it's 3.7 wide. That would be 3.7, I don't know, pixels or M's, but we want to make it, let's, let's try making it 10 wide and see what happens. Ah, that's certainly wide enough. So that's a way that you can make a column wider. You can also select a column and then hover over the right-hand side of it until you see this double-arrowed 
uh, cursor mark and then double click really quickly and it will sort of auto widen it based on how wide the column is. But that doesn't always isn't your best option. Let's take a look at this. This column looks actually kind of good, except that it's uh, 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 Alignment is kind of odd, but uh, you know, the thing is, this is happening. This, this basic worksheet formatting is happening only in column A. So if I were to double widen that or double click that to widen it, this is what I get. So it isn't always the best thing to auto widen it. So I'm going to undo that with control Z. Okay. Next, what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to merge and center it over the same number of cells that this particular data set is. So here we come over to the alignment and we come up to this little icon that reads merge and center. If you click the down arrow, you can see merge and center or merge across or merge cells, or you can unmerge cells. So if you do something you don't like, you can unmerge it. But we're going to click merge and center. And there we go. Now, the next thing we want to take a quick look at is some alignment. Some of this appears to be probably left aligned. Let's make this one a little wider here. That looks like it's left aligned. This looks like it's left aligned. This is right aligned. This is right aligned. And these are centered. Ah. Now, one thing I'll state is numbers tend to be right aligned. And when you put them into a date format or a currency format, or a format that has decimals, they usually stay right aligned. And that's proper, that's an appropriate, so that's fine. But if you're giving information in a table, if you want it to be visually, you know, uh, like kind of more decorative, center is okay, but it's not really good for doing a lot of data analysis. You want to have your, your data formats other than numbers all left aligned. So I'm going to select all of this, and then I'm going to come up here to the Home tabs Alignment Group. And you have basically the alignment of where it falls between the top and the bottom of a cell and where it falls in the left and the right of the cell. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this also it top aligns, which we may not see much difference because the columns are, are excuse me, the rows are all the same height. But what I also want to do is make them all left aligned. And that does this. Now here's a problem. I didn't include these. So these are right aligned, but they're still bottom aligned as well. So we make them top aligned as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to change the data format of numbers. These are salaries. So in here we could do a couple of different things. We use the home tab number area. If you were to add a comma, Ooh, that's too wide, so I'm going to do this. It will simply make this a comma number, 44,200, and it will automatically add decimal points. Well, if I happen to want this without the decimal points, I would need to come here and I would either need to increase or decrease decimal. We have decreased like this. See? But I actually don't want this to be a number. It's referencing a salary. So we have two different ways you can reference money in Excel. You can reference it in currency and accounting. If you're not actually doing a bunch of accounting work, but keeping ledgers, currency can be just fine. Um, so I'm going to click currency and see what happens. Well, the currency will go ahead and add the zeros on it again, but that's fine because it could have been 44,225 cents. That's just fine. I'm going to make this column a little wider by dragging it because I want to show the difference between the currency and the accounting. Numbers and other text tend to default as general until you tell them otherwise. It's okay for text to stay as general unless you start having any issues with it. Then you can go ahead and select it all and choose text, which would be near the bottom. But we'll leave that alone. But up here, what we want to do is select the second cell and we want to check accounting. See the difference? The dollar sign is all the way across here, so your dollar signs would be all the way down a column on the left-hand side, and then the number would be on the right-hand side, but it would also be slightly indented on either side, which is just fine. For this particular column, I'm going to stick with using currency. So the simplest way is to either grab a bunch of cells and come up and choose currency, or I can click one cell and apply the format painter style all the way down to the rest of them. Okay. 
Now, one other thing we want to do is if you want to add a line, it's easy to do. You can add a line by right-clicking on a row and insert. You'll get an insert, uh, a blank line there. I'm going to control Z to undo that. You could certainly start adding lines below it. You can also do the same kind of thing with a column. You can come up here and you can insert a column if you want, which we don't want to keep. So I'm going to control Z. I'm also going to make this a little narrower because it doesn't need to be quite as wide as it was. And then finally, what I want to come down here is I want to sum this. Now, formulas is going to come later on, but in the Home tab, there's a very handy formula that's available for the easiest of functions, adding up information in a column or a row. It's called auto sum. And it basically is this simple formula that just says equal, equals the, the combination of all of these numbers. So if you click this once, well, first you put your, your cursor in the cell, that you want. You select the cell you want the formula to go into. You click this and it will try to intuit where the nearest numbers that are relevant to it are. In this particular case, that cell is at the bottom of a column of numbers. So I can hit enter and we now have this. It's not actually in 14 points like the others. So I could come here and select the cell above it, pick up the style and do this. Down here, we could do a count of these, and it would just be adding all of those up. So again, I can do the auto sum, and it does that. And again, I need to, I think, pick up the. But the other way it works is if I actually just wanted to do an auto sum here of these two columns, I could click the auto sum and see what it does is it looks at those and does this. We don't need that number for anything, so I'm going to do Control Z. Okay, the sheet we want to take a look at here is currently named Sheet 1. You can double click the name, or you should be able to right click it and rename, and then you can give it a, a, a new name. So I'm just going to say Data Formatting. You can add new sheets easily. So with this plus sign, you can insert a sheet, which is empty. And it defaults now to sheet one because what was sheet number one has been renamed. However, I have noticed that sometimes when I've worked on a file, when I've renamed a sheet, it may still come in as sheet two or three or whatever. But this is sort of the default. So you could do this. If you want to get rid of a sheet, you can right click on it and you can click delete. If you want to get rid of several sheets at once, you can hold your shift key down and click each of the sheets so that they're grouped. And then you can right click and delete them. There you go. Finally, let's see about protecting the sheet. Is there protecting the sheet on here? That is something you would usually put in in review. You come over to the review tab and over to the protect column group and you would click protect sheet and then you would give a password to unprotect the sheet. And the idea is this is so people can look at it but not edit it. Playing with these different things tends to get very tricky. So if you're going to do this at this point, just stick to the very simple thing. So I'm just going to put the password to unprotect the sheet will be open, short for open sesame. Click OK, and it's going to ask me to repeat that. Open. OK. And there we go. So now if somebody else were to open this and want to work on it, they would have to input that password. And if I want to unprotect the sheet, I would just have to type the password I gave it, and it would unprotect the sheet. And then from here, we are done. So you just always want to make sure that you save again before you close a file, and then close the file. And actually, you can just do Control-W, and that closes the file. So that's what we've got. Thanks very much.